you know, I do, I do have annual fees every year, but let's say I have five or $600, $700 in annual fees. If you take two vacations a year and you're not paying anything for that, $700 for two vacations when we're going to Hawaii and Puerto Rico and New York and D DC and California, like we're not, we're getting, we're, we're always coming out ahead. So um, I do, I do reassess them every year though, to say, are we sure we're going to have a use for this next year kind of thing. But I know that's interesting because like, as investors, we spend, you know, large amounts of money sometimes with, uh, you know, buying, buying down payment on rental properties or fixing up rental properties or, um, you know, just an influx of cash going in and out, in and out daily. Um, mm -hmm. So I wanted to bring you on because I wanted to, to let everyone know that there's, there's more to just, you know, okay, I'm going to go spend 20 bucks at Home Depot and then 30 bucks here or, or, I'm gonna, or I'm going to flip this property or whatever the case may be. And I, we got a, we have a gentleman on here that comes and talks uh, every now and then and spoke at our mastermind that we did in Florida um, where he he's hacked credit cards, maybe a little bit differently. Like for example, he um, what he, what he'll do is he'll, he'll maximize the use of each credit card. He has like, I think he's got close to like 13 or 14 credit cards does the same thing you do with travel hacks. I think he said he's never paid for a flight since he was like 18 now. Um, just, consistently using the right credit cards and, you know, and, and it really, you know, for us, some of us that went on the mastermind, he kind of taught us like using cash is not maximizing the return on your purchases as much as you can. Right. Right. Um, can you give us some examples of how you use your credit cards and, and maximize the return for travels? Yeah. I mean, like you're saying, you know, what kind of things do I, what kind of expenses do I route through them and things like that? Yeah, Things of that nature. Yeah. yeah I'll, I'll tell you. I do want to, I do want to say that, I mean, and I didn't really even think about this until, until you all were talking before I started talking the, the very first person I ever coached. And I don't, I don't really coach regularly on travel hacking. Like I've done a few people, but, but it's, that's not, not trying to do a sales pitch to do travel hack coaching. Cause I don't have the time to do it, but um, I did it for a personal friend who is a local builder. He builds commercial and um, residential. And he was, he, I, I taught him a bunch and helped him through this huge Disney trip. And then they did a big trip to Mexico, um, he and his wife and his son. But he was routing all of his expense. I mean, he, I mean, I don't even know how many, I don't even, it was out of control, the amount of money that flowed through you know, his business. And he does a lot of work with Home Depot and Lowe's. Like those are his major suppliers for a lot of, a lot of things. And he was always using this one card. He's like, oh, I have a million American Express miles. And I was like, but what are you doing with them? And he's like, oh, I don't know. They're really hard to use. I don't think they have good value either and whatever. And I'm like, do you understand like how many like to sign up bonuses you can have and how, if you, if, if you can, but he, he had to get his wife involved to do this because he didn't have the time to, to strategize. But I was like, you've got to sign up for this card and this card. And did you know you can transfer these points, you know, all those American Express to here and get this type of trip instead. And, and I said, gal, if I had the money, the cash that was like flowing through like yours is, it would be out of control. Like I would have way more points than I ever knew what to do with. Um, but since I'm not in real estate and I'm not a builder, um, you know, I do a couple different things. Like I definitely, there are certain cards that are better to use for different things. You know, you, you mentioned like, you know, when you guys are needing to go to, um, um, home improvement stores that like different cards will run incentives where they'll do point multipliers, like for every dollar that's spent at home Depot, you get three times the points for this quarter you know, and then there's other points where you'd only get one point and you, you do have to figure out like what's the best card to use based on, you know, what category of spending I'm doing. So I do a little bit of that where I use certain cards for certain types of expenses. So I get the like maximum amount of points. Um, I do my, I do um, every single charge I have goes through credit cards, but it goes through different ones. Even our, um, so everyday things like gasoline and groceries, um, and restaurants and things like that. I'm using my credit card for, but then also like, um, internet and cell phone, 
there are certain business cards where you get with like Chase Ultimate Rewards, you get five times points on cell phone and on internet and on streaming services. And if you've got that on autopilot where it's just paying it every month, um, I mean, you're going to pay those bills either way. It's just, you know, you're going to pay it as your credit card, not straight to, in my example, Sprint or Comcast. I'm going to be paying it to my credit card company instead, but it's the same amount. It's not um, something that's, you know, it's, I, I'm not paying extra to do this, but I automatically then get a set amount of points every single month on those just set standard recurring fee or expenses. But then the other thing that I do is always <laughs> when I know that I'm going to have a major expense in my own home, obviously, if we've been here for 23 years, we're going to be doing a lot of remodeling, which we have, um, we're getting, you know, we're, I know we're going to go get all new appliances. I go find a, find out, you know, I think through what trips we're going to take. I find out what the sign up bonuses are on other cards that I don't have. I sign up for a card. I go out and buy my stove and refrigerator and, you know, dishwasher. And then I pay it off like within the week or two. Like I, I buy it, I do it. I meet the minimum spend. I get all my points, pay the card off. And I have, I'll, I'll admit, there are some cards where I'll never touch that card again, which, which isn't always great. You know, you can't do that with every single card. Um, it, it starts to draw red flags and then you turn around and cancel it. There's some, you can't get too aggressive with that. But um, when I know I've got a big expense coming, I absolutely sign up for a new card. I did it with my kids' braces. That was my other example. I was going to pay, I knew we saved up and we we're going to pay for his braces in full. They were like four grand. Well, I was like, well, what, what are the sign up bonuses for different cards right now? And I found one that I was like, okay, we could use this for our trip to Florida and this would make sense. And so we go in, I sign up, get approved, swipe the card at the dentist, uh, turn around. And then two weeks later, you know, we, we have the cash in our checking because we already saved up for it. We pay it off. Good to go. We've got tons of points for, our, you know, our next flights are all covered for our spring break or whatever. So, so basically you, you, it sounds to me like you're planning out your purchases, at least your larger purchases, and maybe your smaller purchases are on autopilot on a credit card that maybe gives 5% cash back on uh, streaming services and 4% on fuel or whatever. And it, it sounds like you just have everything on autopilot and then your larger expenses, you just plan out on what maybe what card is going to give you the best return or which one's already offering the best return in regards to that purchaser and where it's going to be made. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we've, we've definitely done that with, I, we, we were season ticket holders once for, for a few years with a college basketball team when my nephew played and then, um, with a, a NFL team as well. And when those season tickets came up, like it was kind of an annual event. Like I'd be like, what card am I going to do this time? Cause again, I mean, the points will come like that. And then yeah. unless, I mean, if it has good other good incentives, I'll use the card again. But sometimes I, mean, like I said, sometimes that card won't really get used much after that that's happened. But, um, but I don't, you know, people say all you do is open and close them. And that's not, that's not really the case. Cause there's been, there's been a lot that are worth hanging on to for a couple of years. And it's about thinking ahead and thinking, will I have use for this in the next 18 months? I mean, you, you can't, you do have to be, you do have to plan ahead, I think, to use these cards wisely and know what to hang on to and what to get rid of um, are you ever at the gas station like flipping through your cards figuring out which one's going to be the best fuel for that day yeah. so, sometimes they keep running so covid this year has been like hard to keep track of but it's been a good thing that um the cards run different incentives that like they'll change their incentives and say you know um for a limited time because they realize like especially these ones that are aligned with that certain, certain travel companies that they're, um, or, you know, airlines and hotels that no one's using them for that right now. So like having a six times points, every time you stay at a Hyatt, it's like, who the heck's staying at a Hyatt right now? Nobody. So then nobody's using their card. So then they're like, well, you know, wow, we've got to change this. And okay, we'll give six point six times points on gas. 
people are still doing gas, people are still doing groceries. So this year has been like no other where you're getting all these incentive, extra incentives for restaurants, groceries, and gasoline. And home improvement stores was another one on the on the list. Um, office supply stores have kind of stayed the same, but they they switch it up. So there are some times where I'm like, wait, what's Hilt? Wait, was my Hilton American Express is that the better deal right now? Or didn't I just read something that that Chase Ultimate Rewards or, or you know the Sapphires doing three times X on groceries like? There are times this year where I'm like, I can't remember which one's the right one to use. And sometimes I just, there's like two, those are the two I, I really use the most is my Sapphire and my my Hilton American Express. I love that. I love that. Hi. Um, talking about kids on, on your Instagram account, on the bio, you says that you have a two five five two five uh, 529 fully funded accounts. Mm -hmm. Uh, what what does fully funded means to you? I mean, I don't know if it's fifty uh, thousand. Yeah, um, I'll give you the number. I don't really write it on there. I mean, but I don't. I, not for any reason. But there's a hundred thousand in each of them right now. So the estimate, and that was our goal. Like my kids are eighteen and fifteen. So and we started saving for them when they were born. So lots of years. Not this didn't happen in five years, but we. It, I kind of just projected through research and, you know, you can go on college websites and say, you know, it's really a quick Google. I mean, they, they, they put it out there, what tuition and room and board is. And in my particular state, in my mind, I thought, okay, my kids are going to in-state schools. They're going to public schools and that's kind of switched now, but, but um, what's it going to take? And in my mind, I thought if I have a hundred grand for them, this is, you know, years ago, surely that'll be enough. I mean, the, the inflation, you know, every year, it's just unreal how much it goes up all the time. But luckily with my son, who's going next year, that absolutely covers it. I think he's, I think his tuition will be like 22 ish. And that probably includes even like books, but that includes room and board because you know, that's not in town or anything. And so that's, that's where I am right now. And again, I don't really push my numbers out on Instagram. I don't, I try to talk in percentages and this and that, but I, this isn't something I'm super private about because you can kind of figure it out. I mean, what a lot of public universities kind of hang around that 25,000 a year, some are more, but in the Midwest, they seem to be around 20, like a little over 20,000 a year. And so both of those are funded. I have one for my son, one for my daughter, but again, now my daughter is telling me that, and, and I, there's just, she, there's, good reason that she may end up at a private university, which will be much more. So we continue to save. So we have four more years to just continue to put money in this account and see if we can get there by the time she start, she starts. Um, we'll the rental property will appreciate for you and give you cash flow during that time. <laughs> <laughs> Are you trying to get a sales pitch? I know. Look, I had a, I bought a rental property five years ago for one thirty. It's worth two seventy five right now. That's so awesome. So, I would, yeah. I would, I don't know. I, I've always been such on one side with money, but mm -hmm. I know that's not okay sometimes because I'm like, you know, maybe, maybe I should have a fully funded fill in the blank, right? I save up seventy thousand, and I'm like, eh. I'm going to buy a rental property and then I just don't do it. And I feel like a lot of the people on this call are probably in that same boat. Um, yeah, but, I know. And I'm on the other side of the, the, the house and it is really, if no pun intended, um, that I'm doing everything in the stock market. I mean, we invest like this money is not, you know, sitting in, in, you know, some non-interest, you know, money market, you know, yeah. 1% kind of earning. I mean, these are in true with 529 plans you know, you can choose your investment within um, those vehicles to, to be as aggressive or conservative as you want. Like they, I mean, within limits, it's just like a 401k sure. plan. Like they kind of lay out, here's what you have to choose from. And every pro 529 plan is different, has different choices. A lot of them are run by like Vanguard and Fidelity and stuff, but um, where, you know, there's the invest in real estate and get X return or invest in, you know, 
I don't do just index funds. I do mutual funds too, because I've been in technology forever and there's a lot of good technology mutual funds. And that's yeah. where I just always lean to. So I'm getting good returns on those too. And I just, Mark and I talk about it a lot. I mean, seriously, he could fix up anything. He does all our remodels. He's in real estate, yet there's just some times where we go, no, we don't want it. We don't want to do it. We don't want to mess with the renters. <laughs> we don't, I mean, it's, we talked, we've talked about it all like for 20 years about getting yeah. more into it. And we just never pulled the trigger and just stuck with the stock market path. But that's okay. I mean, that, I mean, there's, there's, great. you know, there's, uh, there's power and leverage and, and wisdom and, and sticking in your lane and just following it through and seeing it through and through and going through the ups and the downs. And you're going to make it regardless. If you can stick to one thing and, and you can just see it through and through, it doesn't matter if it's real estate, if it's the stock market. I mean, everything is bound to grow, right? So ultimately, I, I think I don't think there's a right or wrong answer. Um, no, I don't think so either. Uh, yeah, my question was, um, are we able to transfer the miles or points from different cars just to redeem for one trip or, you know? So... With the bank cards, um, like Chase Ultimate Rewards, um, American Express Membership Rewards, you can transfer them to other programs. Chase seems to be the best at this. They're, so, so Chase has a, several different cards. They have um, the Business Inc. cards, and there's a couple of them. And then they have a couple of different Sapphire cards and then the Chase Freedom. Um, those all earn ultimate rewards. So Chase ultimate rewards, like to me, our goal. I mean that, you know, if you want to get back to what's, what are the best points out there? To me, it's Chase ultimate rewards because you have a couple different options. Like you talked about transferring them to another program. Um, they have a handful of partners that like included where you can transfer one-to-one -one point, which is wonderful. So one Chase ultimate reward point equals one um, world of Hyatt point or one Marriott Bonvoy point. So because of their flexibility, that's why to me, I feel like they're gold. So those, but they don't transfer to, let's say Hilton, you can't transfer them to Hilton. However, if you wanted to book a Hilton with your ultimate rewards, you can use the Chase travel portal and book. And it's basically those points turn into cash. So it's like um, with the Chase preferred card, your points are worth um, 1.25 cents. So a penny and a quarter of a penny um, per point. And those then can be applied as money towards travel. I use those. I use the Chase travel portal a lot of times for rental cars. So we just did a trip to Florida a couple weeks ago. Um, I used my uh, Southwest miles in that Southwest program. I use my Hyatt points that were in the Hyatt program. And then I was like, well, we've got to rent a car for a few days. And we rented it through dollar or budget or something. And I just went on the Chase portal and I booked it through there and say it was like $250 or something for the days we had. And then they apply the points as cash towards that travel. So that's why like Chase Ultimate Rewards are so amazing that you have the flexibility to transfer them into Marriott, Hyatt, um, IHG, which is like Holiday Inn, International Hotel Group, United, Southwest, and you can transfer them and convert them into those points for those loyalty programs and merge them with other points you have. And then sometimes it even, I talk about this a lot, like with certain um, programs like Hyatt, it's they're, they're worth more if you transfer them into Hyatt and redeem them through Hyatt versus like um, booking a trip through the Chase travel portal itself because of the, the way it's calculated. I mean, you can use less points and, and get a whole free night, whereas you'd have to spend another 5,000 if you booked it through the portal. So there's just these options and flexibility and the fact that you can apply the Chase Ultimate Rewards to rental cars, even condos. So, um, you know, they have things that are beyond, it's all kinds of travel. It's really the back end is Expedia um, that Chase uses. And, you know, you aren't limited to certain brands when you have those bank points. So that's why those are like gold. Cool.